tried Fenders and tried Gibsons, tried loads of other ones. And uh, while they all played well and they were they sounded good, there was just always something about them that wasn't it didn't sit right, you know. So I felt putting one together myself, the time and the energy that goes into it, and testing out things, and a lot of it didn't work at first. And I mean, the first guitar I tried to build, the neck was too big by a couple of frets, so I sawed them off, you know, to, just to get the intonation to work. And it, it was like an old battered strat type, but it was really like basswood or something. It was like you could poke your fingers through it, you know. So it resides on my wall at home. Uh, my f girlfriend had bought me this guitar, and it was um, an SX, which is a cheap line of guitars, the body is. And it was red, glitter, horrible, you know. So uh, a chip of it came off one day, and I got the idea to just take all the paint off it, which was a bit of a nightmare because under the red there was like a sunburst, you know, and under the sunburst was this clear coat. It was made of like, I don't know, the strongest undercoat you've ever found in your life. I couldn't get it off with a chisel or heat or anything, so I ended up sanding it for about 100 hours, you know. You can see it's a bit slim compared to other tellies. Um, when I finally got that off, I, I, uh, I started staining it and Black was the way to go, I thought, for this one. And the, the grain of the wood, if I fired loads of black on it, I could sand it down and make it look really old and rustic, you know. But I had this uh, satin, or this um, this kind of, I can't remember, spirit stain, I think it was. Like, I got it from Crimson Guitars online. And uh, the smell was like this horrible, horrible, I was doing it all in the house, you know. So the smell was awful. When I, when I got it sanded, I didn't realize I was doing it out in my back garden, the sanding process with a wire coming out of the window. And because the window was open, all the dust just went in the house. So whenever my wife came home and I was still out there, like the whole place just was completely dusted. Uh, she still hasn't forgiven me for that. Um, but when I finally got it all off and I started the staining process, I, I fired the green over the black and it kind of made it look really nice. But it still wasn't quite there. So I sanded it down again fired some more black on it and some more green on it. And I did that about five times, like sanding it down and bringing it back up. And uh, it's just bare wood. So it, it's really resonant, you know, mm. as far as tone wood goes. This is American alder, from what I can gather. Um, it's pretty heavy for a telly. I don't know how much it weighs, but it's pretty good. Uh, the neck came from a friend of mine who passed away last year. Um, he left me a couple of bits of equipment and this neck was one of them. It's a Strat neck. It's a 92, I think. But it's got really big frets on it, and that's what drew me to it. And uh, it's got a nice, comfortable, I think it's a C profile, but it's very... I mean, out of I have about 30 guitars. Out of the 30, probably about 10 or 15 of them are, are playable. A lot of them are casualties from doing stuff like this. And uh, But this one is the best player. I don't know why or how, but it was just a combination of things that uh, that just made it so nice and so enjoyable to play. There's something that a Fender guitar, a Gibson guitar, never gave me, this guitar gave me. You know. What about the, the electrics? Where did you get those from? Well, the, they're CTS Pots 250s. There's a 0 0.068 cap from Russia. I don't know if I'm allowed to say Russia anymore, but I'm sure I'll get away with it. Um, just a standard three-way switch, standard 50s tele uh, wiring, and a set of 52 or 53 Leo's pickups. I love the brass barrels as well. Traditional, but the the bridge is not. It's uh, in tune by GoTo and it's pretty modern, I guess. I mean, I miss the ashtray bridge, you know, the, the telly feel, but yeah, it, uh, it works pretty well for this guitar. It stays in tune the most out of all my guitars as well. Um, I did mess up a bit, lining up the strings, you know, you can see that, but I think stuff like that adds character, you know. And it gets a lot of attention. Actually, when I'm doing gigs and stuff, everybody's like, what's, the, what's this guitar? What is this, you know, so it's a good story, I guess. There's a lot of miles still to go on it, but it's already starting to fade. Where you, you know, from the nails and stuff. Just kind of, so I think that'll get, well, I'll say better, but worse, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't have a lot 
lot of stuff. I just use whatever I can get my hands on. And like I said, my friend of mine that passed away, he left me a couple of pedals. Um, before he died though, when I first met him, he gave me a pedal and it was made by Flynn Amps in Scotland. And it's the Rory Gallagher Hawk pedal. I'm a big Rory Gallagher fan, massive Rory Gallagher fan. And uh, I used it just for the acoustic guitar, mostly, you know, until I got a good amp and then I was able to try it out with electric and it just adds like a fluidity to the notes, which is weird, it's just not there with, a, with an amp. So that is on constantly. Um, as far as reverb's concerned, if the amp has it, I'll just use that. Um, but I do own a Big Sky, the Strymon Big Sky, which is a great bit of kit, but it's overkill for 90% of what I do. So it's in a drawer somewhere. Um, it's good for the acoustic stuff. A lot of stuff I do is very intricate and personal and stuff like that. So it fills the room if you're just on your own. It's good for that. Um, paired with the, the Hawk, which is just a, it's just a boost, really, but it's got EQ on it, so it works well with some amps that have a bit of a darker character. It'll brighten them up a bit. Um, there's a company in Europe called Mad Professor, and I use the big, tw big tw Tweety Drive, it's called, and I put it either sometimes after it or sometimes before, depending on what I need it for. If I need it to be louder, it'll go before, and if I need it more distorted and overdriven, I'll put it after. And it seems to work well. But, I mean, my knowledge on these things is very limited, you know. I'm not technically, I'm not in the know about pedal order and chain and all that stuff. I, some people just want to play. I just, I just want to play, you know. Mm -hmm. I think if you start adding too much stuff to it, you become like a, like a slave to it almost. You're, you're like, what, you know, when does this button go on in this song? And if you mess it up, you're like throws off everything else, you know. So I just like riding the volume. You know, if you want a cleaner tone, you can just turn the volume down a bit. It doesn't work on, on all pedals. Sometimes it's just always distorted. So the, the Rory Gallagher Hawk pedal is great for that. So you just turn the volume right up and it's like a real crazy overdriven distorted tone. And then you just take it back a bit with the volume and it just cleans up slowly. Yeah. Works for me. Would that be the equivalent? Because Rory used to use a top boost, didn't he? Yeah, well, Rory would use the, the AC30 and a Fender Bassman or, or a 57 Twin, and there was always some kind of, like a Dallas Range Master or, or something there, on, like on top of the amp, mm. and that was it, you know. So Rory was allowed to play at a lot higher volumes than your standard musician of the day, and the amps were made way better back then, and the valves as well, you know. So to try and chase somebody else's tone is in, in a modern day with modern technology, it's not going to work, you know. So, um, as much as I would love to sound and play like Rory, um, I'll never get there. I know that. So I'm just going to sound like me, you know. And 90% of it's in the hands anyway, you know. Mm. You can you can get tones that don't exist to other people because they think it's in the pedal or the amp or the guitar, but it's not really. It's the player, you know. I think. I hope I'm right about that. I could be wrong. I have on occasion been wrong you know so I'm well aware um, but yeah for me I, I, I just I don't want to get caught up in in having loaded pedals and different settings and I do to a degree but uh, as pure as, as I can make it that's what I'm trying to go for <laughs> Buchanan. I love Rory and I love Roy for their, their playfulness in their playing. It's just completely unscripted, you know, they just go off on these things. It's a natural ability to do that. And there's a lot of players that don't have that playfulness that really draws you into their playing, you know, they're like, they're not taking it seriously. Mm. They're just playing. That's just the way they play, you know, so I try and be as natural as I can, just like their example, you know, and have fun with it because it's not it's, you know, that's why we do it. Yeah. It is. It is fun. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. You know. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't know how anybody gets through a day without playing an instrument or 
making music or doing something like that. You know, I have no idea how people cope with their lives by not having that outlet. I mean, I've been really lucky with this. I was born into it. My dad played and, and uh, I just, I got lucky with the music, you know. I'm very, very thankful to be sitting in this chair with you gentlemen today. You know, it doesn't happen to, to a guy from Belfast very often, so thank you. <laughs> this for about 25 years since I first heard of Loudoun you know and their company in Northern Ireland they worked together with a different well, or a different company was born out of the Loudoun name called Avalon and they took over the Loudoun factory and Loudoun was gone for a while and, and Avalon came along so a friend of mine bought an Avalon and I ended up with it and that's what I used for for years and years and it's battered to hell but it's been done the right way you know so it's retired now when the opportunity came along to get a loud, and this is only four months, five months ago, you know, when it was built, so a little bit longer when, when the idea came. Still haven't paid for it yet. You know, it's kind of on time and hopefully someday we'll get there. But um, everything that I didn't like about the Avalon, this has, you know, like the bridge has the, the string through, the string through bridge, which whenever you're slapping guitar, you can kind of, it can get a bit sore. So I love that, and the, the pickups, uh, LR Bags Anthem, which is great, I've never used one. Um, quieter than the Fishman's, you know, but, but better sound quality, I think. Uh, they didn't have jumbo frets, but they got some in for me, which was really nice of them. And the neck profile, I can't remember what, I, what the details were, but I give them the Avalon, because the neck on it, I had kind of sanded, and uh, it had a particular profile, and this is, more, more or less what that was, so I'm really happy with that. It could do with the edges being rolled a bit, and I have done it a little bit myself, but it could do with a bit more, still a bit of an edge on that, but um, yeah, it's, it's a lovely, really responsive guitar. Like I tried it with 11s and I tried it with 13s and it just didn't work. And I'm a 13s guy, but uh, the 12s on this just work fantastically and it's, I don't know how long it'll last, but they do say that you can build two you can build a guitar two ways. You can build it to last, or you can build it to sound good. But you can't have both. So I think this is one that's been built to sound good. So we'll see. We'll see how it fares up. But uh, on a scale of one to ten, this is a ten for me, um, and it's my pride and joy. You know, there's not a day goes by unless I'm away from the house that that I don't pick it up and play it. And uh, I mean, an hour after I got it, there's a chip in the headstock, you know, so the, the novelty thing about keeping it protected was gone straight away. And I'm glad because some people are a bit over jealous with uh, leaving their guitars out. And I mean, I was in Memphis about a week after I got it and it fell over and it's got a chip in the neck. So it's, it's going to be a bit of a workhorse for the next couple of years anyway. Best thing I got for it, though, Audrey, one of my managers, got me this. It's like a stick thing. It sticks on. You just wash it and it sticks again, you know, but if um, it just sticks to your legs so it doesn't slide about. I actually got it for a resonator guitar, which was it's made of steel, so it was going all over the, all over the place. But uh, it works good for this guitar, keeps it steady, you know. This is Tasmanian Blackwood and Sinker Redwood. I guess the Blackwood's on the sides and the back and the Sinker Redwood, it's on the top. Uh, well, when me and George were designing this guitar, me and George Loudon, sitting in the bunker, smoking many cigars, contemplating life and philosophy, I asked him what his favourite tone woods were, and this is what it was. So I said, build it in your image and I'll destroy it for you, for free, you know, I'll pay you someday. And he was, he's, listen, the guys there, the work there and everything, they're, they're the loveliest bunch of people. And they work with you, and it is kind of, they realise that musicians don't have a lot of money to buy these kind of really upper market, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds on, on equipment and stuff. So he was, they were really, really nice to work with me on this and get it the way I wanted it. And uh, 
there was no dramas and they haven't asked for money and we've been paying bits and pieces but it will be like that you know here and there type payments and and I love them for doing that for me you know because not a lot of people would so I, I wanted a Loudon I wanted an Irish made guitar and they were happy enough to oblige you know <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, my dad would be number one. My dad was kind of like a mix between Ralph McTell and Tommy Emmanuel. You know, if they had like a baby, my dad would have been that baby, you know? <laughs> he was just so naturally gifted. Every time he picked up the guitar, he played something new that I'd never heard before. And it was just, he was a magical guy. I still play some of the songs that we used to play together. And it's always, it's got like that missing element to it now, you know, that he's passed on. He passed away 10 years ago, but still some of them songs are just haunting because the stuff he would, he would do in them, it was just unbelievable. As soon as I heard the blues, and it was and my, my dad had a great LP collection, and we listened to music every day, and we played music every day, you know. And when the family broke up, I stayed with him, and I went to school, and I got lunch, and then I walked home, and I just sat, and me and my dad would get three bottles of Blue Nun from the Off License for a tenner, and we'd like sit and watch The Godfather, and we'd play guitar and listen to LPs all day and all night, you know. And it was like that for a long, a long time. I loved it, like it was a great relationship. I wish he was still here, he would have loved all this stuff I'm doing, you know. I mean, that's my boy, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs>